Hi there, I'm Tyler Ballhorn, and this is the Stock Scores Market Minutes for April 15th, 2013. This week's topic, dealing with a chicken little market. How to deal with a market that feels like the sky is falling, and those who are invested in gold probably feel that way, not to mention the sell-off that we've seen in equities. Let's get into the analysis. But first, I want to remind you that I will be in Vancouver Tuesday, April 16th at 7 p.m., and then Toronto Saturday, May 11th, Montreal, Sunday, May 12th, both of those at 9 a.m. If you'd like to register for one of these free events, go to stockscores.com slash skate with a C, and we'll see you there. All right, let's get into, first of all, what is this chicken little market concept? When there are sharp sell-offs, it can feel like the sky is falling, and the tendency in markets is for uptrends to take a long time, and then the correction to be very fast and sharp. And the question is whether you should sell on these big down days or whether you should stick with the market. Well, one of the things that helps you answer this question is to consider whether the selling pressure is from a falling top or a new high. Another question to ask is, has an important trend line or support price been broken? Now, in some cases, patience to exit after a sharp down day usually provides a better exit price. In other cases, you need to sell when the market tells you to sell. Ultimately, we listen to the market's message, and I can show you a little bit more about how this works with the two markets that have been moving quickly on this Monday and, and for gold also on Friday, and that is the uh, chart, first of all, of the S&P 500. Now, here you can see the big down day that we uh, suffered through today, this Monday, April 15th. But notice that the upward trend line, which I've drawn in red, is still intact. Notice also that the market is falling back from a new high. The market has not made a falling top. And therefore, it is not likely that this will end in more sharp downward days. Now, it could in the days to come, but what is most likely going to happen is the market will bounce for a few days and then possibly make a falling top and then possibly break that upward trend line in red. And when that happens, that is the time to sell. But you can see that we've had some sell-offs in December and another one in February, and both of those didn't end in a big correction because the upward trends weren't wrecked and the market was not breaking down from a falling top. So keep that in mind. Now, if we go look at the gold chart, you can see a very different pattern leading into the selling pressure on Friday. I mean, on the chart of gold, we've had falling tops since November, another one in January, another one in March. And that is why I've been bearish on gold for so long. Notice also that from each falling top, there was a breakthrough support. I've drawn those support lines in green. We had a breakthrough support in the middle of December, another breakthrough support in the middle of February, and then, of course, the breakthrough support that came last week. Well, these are signals that you want to get out of things. When you get breakdowns through support from falling tops, run for the exit door. Some of you may be wanting to sell now, and I caution you because you really should have sold some time ago. The selling pressure right now in gold is emotional, and there will probably be a little bounce back in the short term, and that will give you a little bit better exit price. However, the fact remains that gold is in a very bearish trend, and although there could be a bounce back, I don't expect that bounce back to be long lasting. Now we have a chart here of the TSX, and it has broken its downward trend line from a falling top, and that is largely because of the heavy weighting of commodity stocks on the Canadian market. Now this may lead into more selling pressure, given that we are breaking that upward trend line, given that we are breaking down from a falling top. But keep in mind that in the Canadian market, you've got a lot of commodity-based sectors, and then you've got some of the sectors which have actually been doing well, like telecommunications. So I don't think this is a wholesale sell signal for every stock in Canada, but it is something to be very cautious about with the index and, of course, those commodity-related sectors. Now, the... TLT, which is the Treasury Bond ETF, broke its downward trend line last week and has continued to show strength. I think what this demonstrates is that the world is rushing into U.S. dollar assets, mostly the stock market and also the bond market, because of the global slowdown 
in many of those emerging markets. And I think that continues, but I don't believe that the strength in the TLT is necessarily a sign that the U.S. stock market is having a problem. I think it's more a case that the global economic environment is negative and money is looking for a safe place to land, and that is U.S. Treasuries and the U.S. stock market. Oil also broke its upward trend line. This is more of a pennant pattern. It did that on Friday as well. And again, the global slowdown is going to hurt oil prices. Now, this is actually a good thing for the North American economy. The lower oil prices go, the more money consumers have to buy stuff. And that always helps things like the retailers, consumer staples, that sort of thing. Things that people buy domestically in North America were uh, more affordable for people when prices of oil are lower. But uh, this does paint a picture that is rather ominous for the overall global economy. Oil moving down tells us that the global economy is slowing down. Now, oftentimes we'll see the VIX make a big jump up on a big sell-off day like we had today in stocks. And it did go up today, but not in a real strong fashion. It has not yet broken the downward trend line. It was breaking higher from a new low. And so all of the signs here, although they point to some caution being warranted, do not tell us that we should run for cover in U.S. equities. So I remain bullish on U.S. stocks, but with a certain ounce of caution because of the weakness today. We could break that upward trend line now that we are testing it. I am bearish on Canadian stocks. I've lowered my rating there from neutral, given that the upward trend line has been broken. I continue to be bearish on gold and am now bearish on oil because of that breakdown. The global economy is slowing. And that is hurting commodities. Investors are not concerned about money printing. Gold is oversold and should make a short-term bounce, but any strength is likely to be short-lived. U.S. stocks still strong, but as I said, caution is warranted. Well, that has been the Stock Scores markets, Market Minutes for April 15th, 2013. Have a great week in the market and trade well.